Welcome to the Go Hard Chick podcast. This is your host, Crystal Holmes. And today I bring you episode 23, My Autoimmune Disease Journey, Beating Hashimoto's. So this is another solo episode, and I wanted to just pop on here just to share what I have been dealing with the last year. In January, February 2020, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, which is a autoimmune disease which affects the thyroid. And I will delve into a little bit more about what that is when the podcast episode actually starts. But I wanted to come on here and just do a little introduction because after I recorded the episode, I realized that I failed to point out an important part of what Hashimoto's is and what I was dealing with. And what I failed to point out was that when I took my blood test back in January, 2020, part of the reason I was able, or my, my medical providers were able to determine that I had Hashimoto's was that I had elevated thyroid antibodies and my blood test results showed at that time that my antibodies were at about a 123 international units per milliliters. So back in January on my birthday, when I took this blood test, my thyroid antibodies were well above normal. Now what is normal is, you know, it depends on the lab, your doctor, but I think everybody can agree that 123 was above normal or is above normal. I have seen some uh, literature, some medical literature and, and, and research that says that if it's under 100, then you're in remission. But, you know, that's debatable too. I have since taken another blood test. Actually, I took two. I took an at-home blood test in early March, 2021. I could do a whole episode about at-home blood tests. But anyway, (laughs) I took an at-home blood test and my thyroid antibody results came back negative. I couldn't believe it. So I said, I'm going into my doctor and I'm going to have them draw blood. So towards the end of March, 2021, I took a second blood test where they drew blood and it confirmed the first blood test, my thyroid antibodies are now negative. So technically now I am in remission. So I wanted to just clear that up and point that out because I really didn't flesh that out in this episode. So I hope this helps you if you are dealing with any symptoms similar to what I was dealing with, consider autoimmune. Talk to your doctors because I... I totally wasn't even thinking about that I had could have, could have had a thyroid issue. It did not even cross my mind, as you will learn when you listen to this episode. So I hope this helps you in your journey, wherever you are with health. Please listen. If it helps you, please leave a rating and review. If you know of someone else who may be suffering from some sort of autoimmune disease, please share it with them. If you have any podcast ideas or guest ideas, I'd love to hear from you. So without further ado, let's listen to episode 23, all about my Hashimoto's journey. Welcome to the Go Hard Chick podcast. This is your host, Crystal Holmes. And today we're going to be talking about autoimmune diseases, specifically Hashimoto's, because that is something that I struggle with. Uh, I received that diagnosis back in February of 2020. So I wanted to share with you some of the things that I have done and I continue to do to regain my health. I will share that since my diagnosis, I am now in remission. I found that out a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. So I'm thrilled and relieved. So I wanted to share with you some things that I did and some books that I read. Now, this is not medical advice. I am not a doctor. I am a certified health coach, but I am not a doctor. So if you have been prescribed medicines, 
put on certain regimen or, or whatever for your autoimmune disease, please seek the advice of your doctors and follow their advice and treatment guidelines. So let's just jump right in. For those that don't know, what is an autoimmune disease? Basically, a healthy immune system will defend the body against diseases, right? But if the immune system malfunctions for any reason, it may begin to attack healthy cells, tissues, and organs. And that's basically what an autoimmune disease is, where your immune system starts to attack the body which can eventually weaken bodily function and it could become life-threatening. Autoimmune diseases are on the rise. More and more people are being diagnosed every day with autoimmune diseases. There are now an estimated over 140 autoimmune diseases. Some of the most common that most folks have heard of are something like rheumatoid arthritis, for example, lupus, Graves disease, Hashimoto's, multiple sclerosis. Those are some of the more common autoimmune diseases. I was diagnosed in February 2020 with Hashimoto's. And basically what that is, is that is an autoimmune disease or disorder where the immune system attacks the thyroid gland. And over time, that can slowly destroy the cells that produce the thyroid hormone. So that's what I was diagnosed with. Symptoms. I'm going to be honest with you. I really, (laughs) once I was diagnosed and took a deep dive into what this disease is, then I could point to, oh yeah, I did have all these symptoms. But at the time of my diagnosis, I thought that I felt pretty okay. I had some uh, low libido was one thing I complained about to my doctor, but for the most part, I didn't recognize that all of these small things that I was dealing with was really the sign of a bigger issue. Some of the more common symptoms of Hashimoto's are fatigue. Now I've known people and I've read that and I've seen people that have suffered from Hashimoto's and described having extreme fatigue, like could sleep for hours and then wake up and still feel like they didn't get enough sleep. I didn't have fatigue like that, but fatigue is a symptom. Constipation, weight gain, depression, dry skin. I, I, honestly had dry skin, but I'll I'll share, once I go over these symptoms, I'll share my dry skin story. Sensitivity to cold, inability to conceive, brain fog, decreased sex drive. That was me. So looking at these list of common symptoms, I certainly did have a low libido, but I thought, honestly, the symptoms I was having, I really thought I was going into menopause. I thought I was perimenopausal. So (laughs) I marched into my doctor in January of 2020, like, look, I think I'm going into menopause. Come to find out I had Hashimoto's. So I was feeling tired, but I wasn't, like I said, exhausted. I just thought it was regular every day, mom, attorney, woman, moving in slowly approaching 50, tired. I didn't know it could be something bigger. I had dry skin. And this is funny because I had really dry skin on my legs. And if memory serves me correctly, I went to my dermatologist in 2018 because it was so dry. It was itchy. And I, sometimes it would wake me up in the middle of the night. It was so itchy. And I went to my dermatologist and she's like, oh, you just need to moisturize better. Don't take, you know, two showers a day only shower once a day or skip a day. And I'm like, skip a day showering. (laughs) I don't think so. You know, needless to say, that was not helpful at all. But like I said, after I was diagnosed and I researched what the symptoms were, I was like, oh my God. Now, what causes Hashimoto's? I mean, most traditional physicians don't really know, right? 
So in my case, I got the diagnosis. Well, let me back up. I went to my OBGYN for my yearly exam in January, 2020. I thought, like I said, I was dealing with perimenopause. So she said, let's take a blood test. So she did a full panel metabolic blood test. And I went back in to see her in about a week or so. And she's like, oh, everything looks great. But there's something going on with your thyroid. And I was like, what? (laughs) So my thyroid antibodies at that point were, uh, uh, going off the top of my head, they were about 125. Now, based on the research and everything that I've done, I realized I was although I had Hashimoto's, I was at probably at the beginning stages. So I caught it relatively early. But once I, she told me I needed to see an endocrinologist. So I went in in February of 2020 and I met with an endocrinologist, but by then I had pretty much figured out, I, I knew I had Hashimoto's, but I went to the endocrinologist and he wasn't very helpful at all. It was just kind of like, Oh, it's no big deal. My wife has Hashimoto's and are you trying to have a kid? And I'm like, no, no, because sometimes it can help, you know, affect your ability to have a baby or to get pregnant. Um, But it's no big deal. Eventually your thyroid will burn out and we'll have to remove it. And I was like, excuse me. Now I didn't say this to him, but I thought to myself, you must have lost your damn mind. Excuse me. <laughs> you are not taking my thyroid, sir. So I marched out of that office determined to heal myself. And I made up my mind that day. I was like, nobody's taking my thyroid. So I just really jumped in and started reading and researching as much as I could. I think the first book that I really read was The Walls Protocol by Dr. Terry Walls. Super informative. And I started to follow her her diet or her protocol. And it was a slow thing for me at first. Well, let me back up. One major thing I did was I worked out every day. And I even before my diagnosis, I was back in the gym five days a week working out. So I believe that helped. Then I slowly started working on my diet, following the Walsh protocol primarily at first. I did not think, (laughs) even though it is said that gluten can be a huge contributing factor to this disease, I didn't think I had an issue with gluten. So I didn't start to remove the gluten from my diet for a while. But before I get into the food stuff, let me just say the one first thing I did was I started exercising regularly, all right? There are certain foods that Dr. Walls outlines and some other um, doctors, integrative type doctors, that suggest things that you should avoid if you have Hashimoto's. Gluten is probably number one. They suggest removing dairy, sugar, eggs, grains, any processed foods, lectins, and even tree nuts. So I did remove some of these things initially, but I honestly, I could, I am a carbaholic. I was like, how can I get rid of gluten? Well, in about, I think it was April, late April, early May, I took the gluten out of my diet. And when I did that, I felt so much better. Like I I mentioned how my legs were itching, that went away. For years, years, I had post-nasal drip, constantly having to clear my throat took the gluten away, gone. So I do believe now (laughs) that I had some sort of gluten sensitivity. Another thing I did in early May, late April of 2020, I started practicing intermittent fasting. I basically don't eat breakfast. I eat my first meal a day at 12 noon and I'm done eating by 8 p.m. So I believe that helped. 
So I'm doing the exercise. I'm doing the elimination diet is what they call it. I'm, you know, doing intermittent fasting. So I believe those three things. Oh, another important thing. And and I don't want to forget when I had my blood test done in January, 2020, my vitamin D was significantly deficient. So I immediately started supplementing with vitamin D. So another big thing I did was I made sure my supplementation was on point. My vitamin D, B12, I took, um, or I, and I still take basically a thyroid supporting vitamin uh, or multivitamin, I should say. Uh, and I continue to take my vitamin D every day. In addition to Terry Walls, I found and read Ancient Remedies by Dr. Josh Axe, and he kind of gives more of a ancient secret herbal type take to healing the body from different diseases. And I, I really found his book to be fascinating and interesting. And I did incorporate some of his uh, suggestions as well. I even read Alan Christensen's uh, The Thyroid Reset Diet, which was really interesting as well. I did not really follow what he suggested in his book, which basically his argument is if you have too much iodine in the thyroid, that is what can cause the issue. I don't think that was my issue, but his is really interesting. So I would suggest to anybody, read as much as you can. Try as many things as you can. I don't think just removing gluten, for example, did it for me. I think getting my vitamin D levels back up, getting my supplementation back up, getting, you know, removing the gluten, reducing the stress. Oh my God, that's a huge contributing factor. Stress, stress. I just saw my doctor, Dr. Barbara Joy Jones, (laughs) a couple weeks ago. Stress, Hashimoto's can be caused by tremendous stress, maybe a stressful event. Maybe you went through a divorce, maybe where there, there was a death or some other type of chronic stress that can cause Hashimoto. So it's important that if you're diagnosed, you not only clean up your diet, you know, drink your water, get your exercise. You've got to reduce the stress. Another big thing I would tip, I would give And this is probably the most important tip I could give anybody with this. You have to believe. You have to believe you can get better. I walked out of that endocrinologist, out of his office that day, like, you don't know who you're talking to, doc. I was determined. I believed that I could get better. I didn't know it would take me a year, but I believed I could get better. So you have to believe it. Number one, you've got to be committed. Number two, to making the change. And number three, just because you might get better doesn't mean you can slide back into old ways. Because at least for me, I believe those old habits of the sugar, not exercising regularly, the um, gluten, the dairy, those things I believe all contributed to my disease or to the occurrence plus the stress. So I still don't touch those things. Now I'm human. Like for Christmas, my mom makes my favorite, bakes me my favorite cookies. Okay, I ate them, okay? All right? But I know that I generally need to stay away from that stuff. I can't eat it regularly. I can't do it. It's not worth it. So you got to be committed. You got to reduce the stress. And you got to believe. You got to believe. And so for me right now, I think my biggest struggle is the stress. So I'm trying the pandemic. I know every, it wasn't great for everybody. People lost their lives. People lost their jobs. It's been, you know, 
a really, really stressful, hard last year, but it did cause us to slow down. It caused me to slow down. I didn't have to fight traffic every day. I didn't have to worry every day when I got off from work, am I going to make it to my daughter's school in enough time to pick her up before after school care closes? Like all of those stress things that I was dealing with on a daily basis, I got a break from. So I believe that also helped me to heal. Being home, being able to prepare my meals instead of eating something, some junk for lunch, all of that helped. So in moving forward, as we move out of this pandemic and go back to whatever normal we're going back to, for me, I know I have to keep my stress as low as possible. And part of me doing that is modifying my lifestyle, practicing some self-care, getting my butt in the gym and getting my butt kicked every day by my trainer. I know what I need to do. So I challenge you, stay on top. Of, even if you haven't been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, look, ladies, you don't want to, okay? You want to stay in optimal health. So part of that is making sure that you stay on top of your diet, that you're eating healthy, whole foods, that you make sure that you get your blood tests, make sure that you are, get your blood tests. Okay. That is an important marker. You need to see your doctor. If you haven't seen your primary care physician, or if you don't have a primary care physician, you need to get in there and see your doctor and figure out where you are and work on it but believe it. you got to believe it and you got to be committed to yourself. So that's my Hashimoto's journey in a nutshell. There are a ton of resources out there. Like I mentioned the books. I also watch and watched lots of YouTube videos. One of my favorite is I like Dr. Ken Berry, who is married to Nisha of Nisha Loves It. She suffered from Hashimoto's and she talks a lot about what she does and she does something different from what I understand. She is, I believe carnivore, or I could be wrong about that. She eats a lot of meat. Okay. <laughs> and that's what helped her heal herself. I didn't take that take. I'm more probably paleo. I do eat a lot of vegetables. You know, I, I do eat my chicken and fish but I'm more paleo. I, but I don't eat, I don't eat the rice. I don't eat the breads. I don't eat any of those gluten things. I'd stay away from lectin. So I'm not, you know, I love black beans, but I can't, I don't eat them. I don't eat eggs, which practicing intermittent fasting helped me because normally for breakfast, I would always have eggs. Well, I don't eat breakfast anymore. So eliminating the eggs was easy for me because I started to practice intermittent fasting. Stay away from, like I said, the, the processed foods, but there are lots of resources out there. So jump into it. Google folks, get books, read, watch these YouTube videos and just learn, learn because there's so much out there that could be contributing to these diseases, even, even environmental factors there could be something in the environment that's triggering your autoimmune disease. Really, from what I understand, study shows that, you know, most of what we put in our body, you know, from the environment account for 90 to 95% of the causes of these diseases. So you got to be careful with what you're putting in your body and the foods you consume and the chemicals that are out there in, in the environment and where we live, just pay attention to all of that and have a good, healthy mindset and just believe you can get better. There is hope. I'm proof of that. Keep striving, take care, focus, focus, focus. I may come back and do another one of these just to share, I guess, more details about what I do on a day-to-day basis and maybe what I eat. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview of my journey over the last year. Like, again, like I said, it's in remission. I want to keep it that way. And 
I'm here to share and help as many of you guys as I can. Thank you for listening. Take care.